All right, no jumper number three. I'm here with my lovely co-host Taylor, and Hello. Uh, directly across from me, Erin of ShopGene.com, and her uh, lovely. What is the official title? Creative director. Creative director, Amelia. Um, if you guys had a uh, were to compare yourselves to some sort of rap uh, twosome, what, duo. what would it be here? Ooh. Oh my god, rap duo. Are you are you Dr. Dre and she's Snoop Dogg, or are you Fifty Cent? She's Lloyd Banks. Is, is it this kind of thing, or is it more? Yeah. No. Wait, we want to just be everybody. How do we be everybody? <laughs> um, wait, what's a good one? You're a thugger. Totally she's Pee Wee Longway. Yeah, that works. Sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're basing this on exactly. Can I just be little mama? I just want to be little mama. Oh, yeah, but who's little mama. mama's like little person? That, bow wow. That... Yeah, that's what I thought, right? <laughs> bow wow. With you guys are little mama and bow wow. Done. Little mama. But you guys are in the same room together, so it's like. Mm, are we beefing? Uh, <laughs> no. You still trying to smash? <laughs> Do you think they would do that? Who would? Bow Wow and Little Mama. I don't think so. What, what, what is their connection? What do they have in common? I don't know. Their they're, looks. They're both Lil. <laughs> well, Lil Bow Wow is Lil Mama without the long hair, right? Isn't that the thing? That they look exactly the same? Oh, yeah, true. like how they do JB with like Miley and like they do like the... Yeah. Is there a meme I should know about here? <sighs> yeah, you're... Yeah. Or just Absolutely. watch her new video yeah, that's and what I was think about Bow Wow, of and that's all... <laughs> what was your reaction when you saw the new Little Mama video? Bow Wow. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love the name of the song, so I was like, Sausage, okay, trending. And then <laughs> the Little Bow Wow thing. Do you think that she had a career after the uh, Jay-Z stage appearance that she did back in the oh, day? No. Oh, I never thought no. that she would even have like a viral hit like no. she's got right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We made her on the home... We put her on the homepage. Yeah. Really? Oh, so she's down with Shop Jean? But sausage. I mean, <laughs> sausage. Shop Dean is shop that was kind of your thing. She just we tried, always put like a batch of stuff. She tried to do everything she could to be relevant, right? And yeah. I appreciate that. Respect yeah. that. Yeah, I respect that. She absorbed a little bit of the Shop Jean ethos. So, what is Shop Jean? Just for the record, for the people out there that don't understand, we're an online store. We have over like 200 vendors, brands that we carry, and it's just like a shit show. It's like a really fun <laughs> website awesome with lots of like crazy popping things going on and. We just, like, really try to, like, capture the trends hella early and, like, just spit that shit back out. Yeah. And so your early days of doing this, like, what was your, your entry into the owning? Was your intention to ever own an online retailer? Yeah, it was. Like, when I was in college, I went to GW in D.C. I was working three retail jobs while I was in school, and I, like, hated school my whole life. And I was like, I could do this better myself. So I was like, I'm going to start a store online. And, and what age was this? 20. 20. It's three years ago. Wow, it's unbelievable how far it's come since then. Thank you. And so how did Amelia get in the picture? We met interning together at Alexander Wang years ago, and that's how we first crossed paths. And then when she was picking up new brands for the site, I was repping one of them, and we fell in love with each other and started following each other on Instagram, and yeah, she, she lured me in. So you guys are together how many hours a day? Oh, my God. Well, now it's 24 hours a day. Yeah. So, so the BFF status is, is 100%? Yeah, 100%. True BFFs. And it's enhancing since we're, like, basically living together. It's even getting, same bed. getting crazier yeah, and more. Do you good. guys fight? Do you ever argue? Not really. What was the biggest fight ever? Mm, oh, the only time there was, like, there was, like, tears was just, like, around holiday. Like, just, like, feeling the pressure of holiday. Yeah, just kinda, business like, related. Just, yeah. like, we both just want what's best for the company. And emotions are super high around holiday. So probably just... Yeah something emotional but we like that. really understand each other yeah. and like know when like things are rough and like we can like feel the vibes and we just like get over it and like know when to like approach and when not to what are the uh the changes that are happening with the brand right now like what are what would you consider to be your big challenges in terms of growing it or changing it at this point in your trajectory i mean we just don't we're such creatives and like we have like so many ideas and just like not being able to execute like everything that's going on in our head is like the most frustrating thing and like not having the resources financially like the manpower to like make it happen yeah. a lot of people think we're way bigger than we are so i think we do a really good job of like putting on this like awesome storefront and people think that like we're really cool and killing it and, like we are killing it but so like pretty small team and stuff like that so just like do you feel like people probably think that you guys are certified, like you're not going to, there's no possibility of failure at this point in your, in your career, and do you already, do you, do you have that hanging over your head? Like, like, because I'm sure failure to you wouldn't be, you know, complete obliteration of the business, like that's very unlikely to happen, but failure in terms of not continuing to grow or to yeah. not. Yeah, I mean, I think we know we have is like super pop, and we just have to like make the right moves, and I'm like mm -hmm. confident that we can do that, so yeah, yeah not too scared. 
Have you hired a PR person at this point? No, we don't have any PR people. We did it like really early on and like paid so much money and it ended up being just like bullshit. And, and did like, they get you anything? Is this, it seems no. like it never works out for people. <clears throat> no, they like wrote a bio and it was just like, what the it fuck was really is bad. this? Like we need to write our own bio. And that's like a struggle we have like across the board is like we're very particular and we have a vision uh-huh. and it's like kind of if you want it done right, do it yourself and we just have to like make compromises but this for like the amount of money we were paying was just like ridiculous. And I remember Mark Cuban saying in an article like that like press wants to hear like from the startup like founders mouths right. and like I feel like we're much better spokespeople than anyone ever could be for us. Do you read a lot of different like business writers? Because you mentioned Mark Cuban, he's he's a pretty prolific blogger. Uh, yeah, I look at like tech, TechCrunch and like Inc. and like whatever I see pop up on Twitter. I like love yeah. Twitter and I'm always on it. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> it like sucks up a lot of my day, but definitely find like really relevant stuff on there. Have you been media trained at all? No, and, like, that probably shows. Yeah. Are <laughs> you concerned about like, this? No, I mean, like, we're, like, very authentic, like, no filter almost to a fault, but I think that's, like, what people like about us is that we're not super manufactured and we're not trained and we're just, like, young girls out here doing it and we're doing it. So it You say this works. until you have, like, a huge public controversy over something <laughs> yeah, horrible you said. something happened a little bit ago I'll talk about. Like, I, like, have, like, a f- kind of funny Instagram. It's, like, a little, like, fat Jewish fuck Jerry thing going on, but it's, like, a chick. <laughs> it's really and funny. And a smart chick. No, yeah, you. I wow, you guys all know about this and I I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> I, Aaron Jean, you know? Oh, oh, I thought you were. I thought you were saying there was another oh, no. account. Okay. No, my Insta, and like I posted like a picture of like a kid in like dressed up as Lil Wayne for Halloween, and like he painted his face black, and like I wrote like a. Uh, like caption like saying how like ridiculous it is and it was sarcastic uh-huh. and someone like screen capped it and took out the caption and posted on Tumblr like this is the uh, the the owner of Shop Jean in blackface mind you it's like a five year old blue eyed blonde haired boy with like a dreads like <laughs> it just it got like fifty thousand notes like spout out of control. After, like, 5,000, the majority of them were, like, my response, which is, like, I'm a woman of color, business owner. You're dragging me down. This is, like, what the fuck is wrong with Tumblr? And do you feel you have people, like, specifically out to get oh, you in that totally. sense? totally. And Why? it's not, like, what, out what to get me. It's just, like, out to bring down other, like, people who are doing it because they're just, like, have no life and they just, like, live on the internet. And it's, like, as much as I'm on the internet, like, we have real careers. And, like, we make it look really cute, but we fucking hustle hard. Right. So, you know, I'm not interested in bringing anyone else down or, like... Anything like that is much better things to do with your time. So your target demographic is young girls. Is there? Is it? Are you often the recipient of extreme shit talk and pettiness and oh, hate, yeah. or is or is it? Are, are they unified? Is like I'm sure you're trying to empower girls and bring your girl power movement to the masses. But do you, do you, <laughs> do you have a lot of backlash about little stupid shit like that? Yeah, like that. And then it's just like the appearance stuff is just like so crazy. It's like funny. It's like shave your sideburns. Someone said yesterday. It's like. Hey, sideburns are the wave. Either ride it or drown. Get the fuck out of my off my feet. Like, what are you? I gaining? tried to lay my sideburns today. By the yeah. way, <laughs> sideburns are awesome. I love my sideburns. I used to date this Mexican girl, and she had had this, the laser hair surgery or whatever to like uh, thin oh, it yeah. out on the side. Is that what they're they're making fun of? Is I just had like a, I sh- when I was young, I definitely like shaved it because I was like insecure about it, so it grew back thicker. But like, I'm not gonna do that again. I'm like, <laughs> I just like embrace them. Like, fuck it. Like, I'm a little Sri Lankan bitch. Got so, hairy arms. Yeah. What like, is your ethnicity? Yeah, what is that, that about? Everybody here. Yeah. Taylor has a Jewish star on too, which I didn't know about. <laughs> I need to tell today. you something. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Let's just go and start because I need to know, it, Aaron. Okay. I'm Sri Lankan and Irish, fifty fifty. And cool. that explains your last name, which is, I have it written down here. But it's a long it's one. Yoga Sundrum. Yep. And Nailed the first it. name is Aaron, Whoa. which means Ireland. So I got the best of both worlds some way, somehow. I was going to be named Tara, but thank God that thank didn't happen. Thank God. You're myself. Tara on my phone right now. Oh, That's God. Funny. That's really sad. <laughs> That's yeah. the extent of your friendship that you're changing each other's names constantly? Yeah. It's better than Aaron Jean. <laughs> <laughs> your name on my phone, her name is Dream Girl. That's with right. a hello emojis. It's cute. Wow. I don't know how that happened. I don't remember. And so, so you, what's the ethnicity uh, here? Taiwanese and Jordanian. Wow. Okay. Taylor? A straight Jew? No, so listen to this. Okay, so I was walking down the street, and my hair was kind of laid. And this guy, this homeless guy, came up to me and goes, so this is my, this is my question to you. My hair was actually really pulled back. When my hair is pulled back, it looks darker. I'm kind of like, I'm white, I'll uh-huh. be honest. My mom's a little bit of Spanish. That's where I get my childbearing hips from. But he's like, hey, sister. I was like, did he think I'm black? So this is something you're dealing with? Yeah, it's like internal right now. Like I'm kind of like having an <laughs> identity crisis. Like, do you think he thought I was black just because my hair was like 
really pulled back and laid. Like you couldn't see anyone. How could he think you were black? I don't. I don't. I know. don't know. Maybe the lighting was off. <laughs> oh, it was outside. Yeah, oh. it was great lighting. This is this but, is a challenging idea. Yeah. When yeah. I was younger, I used to tell kids that I was Spanish because I was so embarrassed of being Sri Lankan, and really? like kids used to call me like Osama bin Laden, and like wow. your dad must like own a bodega. And then I realized how fucking awesome it is to be Sri Lanka. That shit definitely got me into college. Oh really? You like, know? There, there are like scholarships for this kind of thing. No, but like I'm sure it's something they have to, to do like with meet there uh, this yeah. many kids from this ethnicity. Yeah. How awesome <laughs> is it for them to be like I got a Sri Lankan half Sri Lankan half Irish bitch in the squad? Uh, Word. I feel like they would love that. So the definitely that played a part. Refilled. Yeah. I wish I was yeah. going to fall back on like that. Like, there's way too many white guys wherever <laughs> I would possibly want to be involved. There's a lot of white guys out here. Yeah, it's disgusting. <laughs> what about opening uh, an L.A. branch or an L.A. office? Um, what was the decision there as opposed to you, you already have a store or a, a office space in New York, right? Yeah, so we have the office space in New York, and we were just, like, visiting here a lot and, like, really liked it, and we're just taking, like, the best meetings, like, personally enjoying ourselves for, like, the first time, like, living, and we were just, like you know what, we have to have a presence here. Like, a good chunk of our sales come from the state of California. And, you know, we did a party with, like, ham on everything, and it went really well. And Which one was that? Uh, Soldier Boy Riff Raff. Oh. I was there. I, I had to bail at the last minute for unspecified come reasons. On. Damn. Lame. Uh, I made it rain with fake shop jeans. Yes. Money. Hey, $69. <laughs> Holla. <laughs> What's, like, the, the vibe difference in L.A. versus New York, though? Like, what, what do you like so much more about it? Or, or not that you like it so much more, but what's the appeal? Just you guys are going to hiking tomorrow morning at like six a.m. Right? Going hiking, yeah. <laughs> That's um, the L.A. lifestyle right there. I, know, I went hiking really today. Funny here, it's like being healthy during the day and then just partying until six a.m. It's super funny, but <laughs> I like it. And so many of the friends we meet are like internet friends, and all the internet people seem to be based out here. Yep. So we're like socializing way more. I here. can't even imagine social media like in Brooklyn because I wasn't a, I wasn't in Brooklyn during that age. I'm uh-huh. sure it's pretty cool, you know. It must just be totally different. We were talking about the Uber difference earlier, and that was kind of jarring. You said it would cost so much more than here, Yeah, too. it sucks there. Yeah. Do you even Uber out there? I don't. It's just so easy to hail a cab that I don't really Uber, unless I'm, like, in the Why middle of nowhere. Unless in it's, like, a heat wave, and you're like, no, I need to cash out for the Uber. Yeah, I need that the phone only battery. Use AC. Like, the cabs don't use AC. <laughs> they don't use AC in New York? The cabs don't. The Ubers do. Yeah. What, uh, what, let's talk about Instagram. Uh, you guys used to have this kind of like racket going on the popular page, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how did this work and what happened? So like we started using Instagram from like very early on when I was like doing this in my dorm room and popular page used to just be like pure algorithm right. where it was like, this is literally what's popular. And I used to like at night, lay in bed, follow everyone who followed like X brand, Y brand, and then just like unfollow them all. So we racked up like a good amount of followers. I was taking like stupid pictures like on my dorm floor of like the products in my hand. And then like, yeah, we would just start showing up on the popular page every single photo. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, Instagram gets bought, gets bought by Facebook And it starts to become curated and it's like pick and choose. And like a lot of companies stop showing up and it's like more about like lifestyle photos. And then it's like, you know, nasty girls like behind the scenes instead Mm -hmm. of like them like actually selling a product. And like we post like three to five times an hour, extremely aggressively. Yeah, the five times an hour figure I was kind of baffled by because that goes against like everything that people seem to assume about Instagram. But this works for you guys. Yeah, it works for us. Like it directly translates to sales. Like if we post once an hour, we'll have a weak hour. And then when we pick it up, we'll have a great hour. And, like, we can have merchandise. We have, like, over 2,000 yeah. products that it's, like, been slow. And then we'll post a pic of it, and people will remember that it exists and then go on the site and buy it. That's, like, a really powerful tool. So you guys schedule this all, like, ahead of time, I'm nah, assuming? No, someone does it online. You, you, have you can't somebody schedule else. Instagram. Yeah. yeah. So We've, like, explored to... it. And, it like, all the services, it's, like, if you fuck with their API, like, it's on you. Like, we do not want to lose our account. Like, right. that happened mm. twice for, like, posting titties. Really? And uh, titties and you, and with product. But you had to start from titties. zero at this point. No, we got our account back, but it wasn't easy. Had to pull a lot of plugs. <laughs> a lot of tears were who, shed. Who do you like, call when that happens? Because I, I, I always wonder, yeah, like... Yeah, do you guys have plugs in I the, can't the blast social the media plug, world? but I'll tell you guys later. Tell, tell us about <laughs> what kind of plug would you have? Just some employee that you know? Or yeah. Somebody? Uh, yeah, like how to go through like a million people, like 80, 90 on Rick's at Facebook, Instagram. Please. See, I wouldn't oh, even okay. know where so to you begin had to find how to yeah. start here. It was hard. It was not easy. And it took a couple days. And like, of course, it happened like probably, dur- I think it was like during like a massive sale weekend. And just like, you know, but that's what we get for putting all our eggs in one basket. And I would like recommend anyone not to do that and like diversify the fuck out of your advertising because if like something doesn't go right, like 
But are you guys big on Facebook too? Since that's kind of known nah, for being the Facebook big driver of traffic. Sucks. I don't know. Like straight marketers will say that, and like I'm waiting to hire one of them because we're just like creative marketers, and we like look for like react shit that's gonna like react immediately. Right. But Facebook like will choose what they want to put on people's newsfeed. Right. It's like a serious like you'll never show up it's like it's you tough. can have 50,000 fans and like 800 people will see a post like because they want you to pay yeah straight like, up. what about facebook's advertisement how does that work well they want you to pay and it's it's like it, it hasn't proven to be worth it we don't know it and can't spend enough time like learning it so like as soon as we can hire someone we'll just dump a bunny, bunch of money into facebook what uh? What about when you lost your phone in the gutter? This is just actually next on <laughs> oh, my list of questions. Soleil, volunteer this as well. What's up, Soleil? But uh, yeah, what, what happened there? Because you were hanging yeah. out by a gutter for like basically an entire weekend on on Twitter. Well, it's not the gutter; it's the sewer. First of all, oh, Sorry. And where is this located? <laughs> the sewer is right outside of our office slash apartment, and we visited it maybe like thirty times a day to smoke or just like talk or like whatever, smoke cigarettes. You just like sit on the this curb. Stoop. Yeah, it's and it's right outside, and like we just had like a little wild like 10 person karaoke like eight hour binge where everyone was like super wasted and i was just sitting there and like black kind of black out and like my phone with no phone case on it just dropped and it has like a little like bend in and just like went down and then like well, we hear it slap on the ground and we're like all looking at each other like that did not sound good yeah. And then we hear Aaron go, it went in. And we're like, down. what do you mean it, it went, went down. down? And we're like, what do you mean it went down? And we go there and you can see it. It's like a brand new sewer to our building's new. And it's just like a sparkly clean sewer and like her phone facing yeah. up. And you just, did you have to just give up on it or? Well, the screen was already shattered for like the sixth time, like oh, was, earlier yeah. in the night. So I was just like, fuck this phone. Like I really want a six plus. Like I'm just going to go unfortunately buy a six plus. Um, and get a good case and like actually use a fucking case. Not that we don't sell a million cases. Yeah, that's what I was gonna like, say. I you don't guys even sell use a case. A million cases. Yeah, I'm a... stupid and careless. I guess. Um, Did you make this one yourself or is this? Uh... No, Amelia gave it to me as a <laughs> gift. <laughs> this is present. my new iPhone 6 Plus. So did you designed <laughs> so this yourself, or you bought this off no. somebody else? Yeah, no, this one we just bought from someone else. Yeah, China. It's funny, yeah. That's pretty funny. And um, so then, like, a couple days later, I, like, I think it's, like, going to be such a big deal to call the sanitation department. That's what 311 said to do. And I called, and they literally showed up in, like, 30 minutes. Like, the guys went down. There was, like, a ladder. It's crystal clean down there. And I have, like, the best vine of the guy, like, handing me my phone. And he's like, oh, my God, the sewer phone. And then, like, less than a week later, our, one of our employees, shout out Stove Man, our marketing director, like, had my credit card to go to Chick-fil-A because we were doing a photo shoot. And he was outside and just, like, dropped the, f- the card down there. And, like, I don't know how this keeps happening. So he comes running in, like, I need a hammer. And, like, a photo shoot's going on that we're immersed in. And I'm just like, why the fuck do you need a hammer? Like, what do you need a hammer for? What's going on? So they didn't bolt the sewer back. Uh, so he was able, with his man strength, yeah. to just, like, up and get the sewer top. And voila, we, ha- we fucking milked the shit out of it. We all, uh, we all, I went down there. And it was, like, taking photos. <laughs> I took vines in the sewer. It's, like, beautiful now. There. Now there's, like, 100,000 cigarettes because I started smoking because I'm stupid. You, but it's you not go so in, pretty. Wait, you just started smoking? Yeah. What, why? What happened? I don't know. I'm stupid. I just shared one with you, too, so I can't really say too much. But I don't, yeah, that's yeah, a I need surprising to stop. decision this late in life. It's just, like, a little nice, like, break social like mental are you stressed like, out are you guys both stressed out from all this oh, work always yeah, it's a lot of work always how do you deal with it uh we'll try to laugh like we'll be like crying and then just like start laughing and just look at each other like what is life even yeah internet breaks tumblr vine sharing that kind of stuff i think helps yeah. is that hard for you guys to uh not like it's it's hard when you work in a business so directly involved with social media because you're just constantly tempted to be checking up on it. Yeah. And it's just a huge suck of your time. Totally. Do you just have a lot of self control about this or Yeah, I mean we do it inherently. Like we'll just like not even notice I'm refreshing my Instagram out. It's just like second nature. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's kind of part of our jobs to be immersed in yeah. the internet too and check social media and see if there's anything like super funny going on at Instagram or something trendy on Vine that we need to, like, throw on a baseball hat and start selling, so... You you kind of have to do both. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to juggle them, right? Yeah, it's hard. That's part of the job. (laughs) Something that I saw on the the site was that left shark thing. So, like, Mm. how immediately Mm -hmm. did you guys jump on this trend? Not super immediately. And, like, we don't produce those. We get it from a vendor that we do drop ship with. So they ship directly, and they basically just, like, have graphics that they throw up on, like, a a Uh mock-up. And it's, like, really awesome because, like, we don't 
don't have to hold any inventory. That's like the only person. Do you do, do this that with a ton of brands? Oh, so it's only only a people. Few yeah, because it's just such a headache to yeah. coordinate. Like our units per transaction is like kind of high, so like we don't want people getting like a million packages. We want like the shopping experience as much as possible. Right. Um, are you guys likely to become vloggers in the near future? <clears throat> I mean, I'm huge on Snapchat right now, really? and I know that's, like, not the wave here. Everyone's just like, you Snapchat and, like, disappears and everything, but, like, I love video. I love things coming to life, and I think people love seeing us come to life, and, yeah, it's, like, low pressure when it's just, like, a selfie video, and it disappears after You really after think that, uh, that Snapchat's hotter on the East Coast than it is here? I do. I think, like, my friends there use Snapchat more. Really? Yeah, and I think people are kind of weirded out when, I, when I'm when i using it here. And they're like, what are you doing? People call me, like, the sneak Snapchatter because I'm just, like, in the corner, like, getting everything. <laughs> yeah. Taylor, you agree with this? I don't know how to use Snapchat. Oh, see, I'm big on Snapchat. We oh, get, you are? Okay. I get 12,000 views from Snapchat, so I'm very nice. I'm very proud of this number, even though I, have, awesome. I don't know yeah, what anyone else is doing. <laughs> it doesn't let you see how many actual fans you have, but yeah, it's just so crazy right. that I think 12,000 people could be looking at the stupidest shit. I know how to receive, but I don't know how to, like, send personally. It's a tricky app. I was trying to explain it to my mom yesterday because I really want her to watch Amelia's because there's just so much comedy and oh, she loves could, to see I could never action. imagine my mom being able to comprehend yeah. Snapchat because you have to be familiar with all these different things. That are, like, there's so many things about it that I still don't really understand. Yeah, and it's hard to find like people on there. Like, there's no, like, explore page yeah. or anything like that. You need to know exactly who you're adding and actively secretive. watch their stuff. Yeah. Amelia's got a little TV show going on in there. It's so really are, are you one of these girls that just talks into it all the time? Oh, I talk about it all the time. I say how I'm feeling, yeah. what I'm doing, what we're going to be doing. I showed my podcast outfit tonight on it. <laughs> yeah. I gotta follow this. Uh, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it's an all-day thing. Imagine if you could right. just watch your Snapchat story, like, if it was saved for you, so you could go back in time yeah. three That'd years nice. and watch all the horrible stuff that you were putting up yeah i started saving a lot of my snaps as crazy as that sounds but like yeah one i love like just seeing what i did yeah. the other day and just like memories yeah. with aaron and stuff and then a bunch of people are talking to us about like tv shows too and they're like save your snaps save your snaps now i just got into the habit of it she's got a dropbox link she yeah just blasts out to anyone and it's just like aaron and amelia videos and i just like send it to anyone that asks for it yeah, which is really useful because it's like we don't have a camera crew filming yeah. filming us so are you it's guys like, into this tv show idea the, what, what if you just straight up had a reality show on deck right now that was an yeah. offer would you be into it yeah we're, we did, yeah, we're like we got approached what like last year, and we were just like, "This is a horrible idea. They're gonna make us look stupid. Simple life. It's gonna like, take away from the business." Vibe? Yeah, I mean, I think it's always gonna be that vibe. It could we're be insecure. Really bad for the we're business. just like scared. This all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but as I'm like doing more video, I'm just like, "It is what it is. If you're gonna judge us, you're gonna judge us." But either way, we're like super hardworking. We yeah. have an awesome business going on, and we're funny and entertaining. So. We're just weird about it affecting the business and yeah. like you know involving Taking the employees and. You know, it being weird and like tiffs because of something about the show, you know? Right. Yeah. So that's our concern. Do you have, is it, does the stuff that you sell have to reflect your own political ethos? Because I noticed you had a Barack Obama toilet paper on there or something <laughs> that someone could clearly take the, the wrong I mean, like, way. We also have like Hillary Clinton, like everybody. Like, the thing is, we don't judge. We just like serve it all and like it's for whoever is into it to mm -hmm. like decide what they want to make of it. And we definitely get a lot of critique about it, but it's like, hey, we're not discriminating. Like, we got Hillary, we have George Bush. Like, yeah. it's just like, if you dig everyone. it, you dig it. Do you guys have male shop gene thoughts? Uh, like guys who love us? Guy fans, oh, yeah. yeah. That oh, are straight. Yeah, are they, lots of marriage uh, proposals yeah, in the those DM. Are my favorite ones. <laughs> really? So this is like a constant thing? Because yeah. I, I would think maybe the guys wouldn't even know about you guys necessarily because they're not the, the customers. Yeah, I mean, like, no, we have like 30% of our customers are dudes, which is awesome. Because, okay, like, we got all girl models, we got a pink logo, and they're still down. But I mean, like, I kind of like dug my own grave with like being into wrestling and stuff because it's just like, oh my god, like a chick's into wrestling. Oh my god, uh, you know. I and, love then, that. and she's a boss, and she's so maybe. the wrestling community knows about this. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of like fan pages and stuff like really? comment on mine. I mean, we do a lot of cross promotion. Like, <laughs> if it's like Seth Rollins' birthday, like Shop Gene will post like a happy birthday video because they like know it, mm -hmm. it hits home for me. And we try to like insert a lot of that like personal stuff, make it as authentic and relatable as possible. Do you is is your love of wrestling a genuine thing or is this an ironic thing? Where did thing that or? come it's from? It's genuine. I'm like definitely the first person to call myself a poser. Like I only started watching like three or four years ago. So like my like T Generation X hat. Like I know what I know from like docu's, but like I didn't live it. And yeah. that's like unfortunate. Like sorry, I wasn't exposed to it when I was younger. But when I went to college, <laughs> my mom started watching it. Like empty nest syndrome kind of a thing with wow, my aunt. Really? And then, like, I would come home and she'd be playing. I'd be like, Mom, turn this shit off. Like, me and my boyfriend do not want to watch 
gosh, this is so embarrassing. You're embarrassing me. I'm going back to college. Leave me alone. And then when I actually got home from school, when I was doing shop jean and, like, living in my mom's living room, she would, like, play it, and I'd be, like, doing work on the computer, and I'd be like, mm, so they're getting married? Like, <laughs> wait, but he cheated on him with her? And I just got, like, so into the storyline. She's like, you're hooked, and you're going to be so into it. And it's really inspiring for the business. Like, just, we just wrestling in general. You have a similar relationship, or...? No, I mean, I know much about wrestling just from hearing exciting things that are going on on shows. And she's taken me to, like, some Raws and, like, DC and stuff. Oh, and so it's you guys fun. go live. Yeah. Yeah, oh, no, I we go. And go. it's so fun, but I don't, like, watch it or follow it like she does. Do, are you into, like, the moves and everything? Because that was – I always liked wrestling, but I didn't like the actual wrestling. I liked the, right. watching them yell. And, like, even with you guys wearing the merch and stuff, that makes me realize that I really like, like, the graphic design. Just yeah. because it's clearly coming from <laughs> such a specific, weird, yeah. all-American place, you know? And, yeah. Yeah. I, it's less about the wrestling moves. Like, they're athletes, first of all. I'm just going to say, like, yes, wrestling is, like, predetermined. <laughs> like, it's fake, but, like, so is your favorite fucking movie. It's entertainment. Like, yeah, we get it. But they're, like, athletes, and they get, like, really hurt. And I'll be the first person to defend that. But I respect the hell out of, like, the business that they've built. Like, they right. have, like, 800 employees. Like, 150 of them are independent contracting wrestlers who, like, have there's so much liability. They have so many subsectors, like the merch. They have a streaming network, which is so ahead of its time, like, so revolutionary. And just, like, any time I have a problem, just, like, how would Vince McMahon handle this? Like, so, so he's that role in your life? Yeah. Oh, wow. he is, like, the go-to person. Because, like, it is just the most intense operation. Like, this is the only sport, sports entertainment, with no seasons. It's That's 52 true. weeks a year. There's a, day, there's a show the day after Christmas. There's usually two shows simultaneously happening. There's two live shows a week, one tape show, and sometimes a second live show. I mean, a third live I'm show. I'm astounded by how much information you just rattled yeah. off there. It's that was like, amazing. You just when banged you dig, on us, like, via wrestling. It was kind of yeah, intimidating. Sorry. You kind of, like, went to Twitter, like, like, wait. When you look at it for face value and you're like, oh, it's fake, it's fake. It's like when you actually dig into the layers, it's like, whoa, this is, like, really fucking popping. And they're making hella fucking money. And, like, yeah, they went from being, like, X-rated to, like, PG, thir- PG, but they know exactly what they're doing. I've noticed a big wave in wrestling. People are really into it, and I'm like, where the ha- where did this come from? From like, her, from her. <laughs> no, but where did this uh, like fascination is, huh? with wrestling come from? Like in the past year, if that. Do you know where Dave's Love got that DX jersey? Was that through you guys, or no. do you think she picked up on that from you? No, probably not. I never like to give myself credit for things <laughs> like that. that I don't even know what's going on. But. I've seen like a lot of like little BMX kids like rocking the DX jersey Good. too. So there's got to be some other somebody. Who yeah, people it out. always ask me, and we would love to do like a little vintage curation of like stuff because I always find the best wrestling merch. On the wrestling merch now is like good, but it's not like as great as it used to be. It's not so as like, absurd yeah, as it used I have to, to wear the Stone Cold jacket, even though like I didn't watch at that time. Why blow me? Like I don't really care. If you I like the closer. fact that they are always marketing their own shirts. Like, when they yep. go on stage and stuff, they're, like, the wrestler is wearing a shirt of himself. Yep. This it's is very so, funny It's so, like, planned, and it's such a game, and they're pulling so many strings, and there's a term called kayfabe, which yep. is when you don't know, this. like, yeah. what's real life and what's, like, the storyline. So, like, if someone's, like, seen after, a couple seen after a show together, it's like, wait, are they really dating, or is it the storyline? There's just so much crossover, and it tricks your mind, and you don't know what's real, and, like, we apply that to, like, real life so much. Like, we're not, like, conspiracy theorists, but, like, I never take anything for face value. I'm just like, there's something orchestrated going on here. A lot of stuff in the media, like, Chris Jenner's pulling hella strings, Vince McMahon's pulling hella Oh, strings, totally, yeah, yeah. You know? It makes and, like, you think about the media in a different way, huh, when you see wrestling. Yeah, totally. They're really smart. What do you um, think about Riff getting into wrestling? Ooh, good That's question. That's cool. Yeah, I'm down. What like, do you think about his part. apprenticeship? Like, that he does look like the spawn of Hulk Hogan. Like, <laughs> yeah. let's be honest. Like, they do look related, and his weight gain is just, like, vicious. Yeah, I'm down. It's smart. It's, like, him, like, Are you down B. for Riff? down for him to be in wrestling hell yeah <laughs> like him little b like they're all hella smart they know that they're just like out there acting a fool and like they they are other ones who know exactly what they're doing Riff Raff ever slide in your dms no nah. <laughs> no but nah. you haven't been in lately long enough <laughs> it i'm good everybody. i wouldn't put it past him i don't know <laughs> oh no it's coming watch out for that one yeah what would you describe uh what's the difference between your fascination with wrestling and your fascination with juggalos is it similar or nah, more authentic juggalos or? is like kind of ironic it's just like really funny but i do respect the fuck out of icp like their merch game is so <laughs> on point they also have a wrestling league which i think is awesome right. they i'm just really into things that where they people create a culture right. and a loyal following you know it's like that's what we're really trying to do is like people who live and breathe this shit like do you hear me talking about wrestling like i live and breathe this shit right so it's like people who live and breathe <laughs> shop jean like that's kind of like the generation we're trying to breed and like get those like 
that army going. Do you think there's like, a potential for a Juggalo shop gene crossover? Oh, hell yeah. Have you, have you tried this? Have you I sold? haven't yet. Waiting for the right time. It's like one of those things that we just kind of like, it's there, but we can't make it happen. But we're going to go to Gathering of the Juggalos next month. You are? Oh, next month? Yeah. This is July. already scheduled. The tickets Where are bought. Tickets at? are not bought, but they will be bought. It's an, <laughs> she does about. not seem completely. You're going. Oh, Somebody's going, going with me. Any listeners want to go with me? Backstage passes. Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah, are you yeah. certified? Are you on the list at, at the gathering? Or no, I'll no? oh figure it out. You got <laughs> it. You can't go if you're not on the list. I'll I, figure I, it. I wonder how many normal people like you get. Well, I say normal, but I wonder how many people that are non juggalos go to this sort of thing at this point because they it's been on Vice a million times mm-hmm. and everybody kind of knows it's a good time. Yeah. Regardless. And they have interesting acts. Like they have Flash Adamas playing, which is like hilarious to me. Mm. I wonder how much how much do they get paid when you see like you know. Know, all these legendary rappers and like all these groups on there. I always wonder, like, how much do you pay Slayer to play fucking right. the Gathering? You know, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I know Kidding performed recently at the W. What is it WWE? Excuse mm-hmm. me. <laughs> what Kidding during WWE? He and performed? you're gonna tell us how much you got paid? <laughs> they no. don't get paid. That's like press, just like going on Good Morning America. Oh, yeah, it's like kind of like Wiz did a set and it was terrible. It was like oh, yeah, literally they gave bad. him like eight minutes and he did like every song like Black and Yellow, like just like it was so bad the crowd was just like during wrestling, the during wrestling du- thing during Raw. Wow, and it was like the lowest rated. Do segment you think of the Wiz night. is like the guy everyone wants to see during Hell that match? No. Like, why do they do that? No, but why I mean they... they're trying to like be diverse. Like we just got Two K Fifteen WWE very late. Two K Sixteen would come out soon, but like the sound. Soundtrack is like everything. It's like some country, some Skrillex. It is. Like, on the video game, it, it's yeah. they have country in it. Yep. Yeah, we Florida, left it. We left the opening thug. just playing, and we we're just like there's young thug in the wrestling it. video game. Yes. Yeah, it was insane. This I'm is very sure. important that I know this. Wow. Yeah, they they really try to like tap all markets and like make sure everyone's taken care of. Like they have a massive Spanish community. They have a massive female community. They got the kids. They get the people down south, like who listen to country. They do a lot of shit with like Florida, Georgia line. And I'm just I like, feel like it's middle of America, like love and hip hop. Yeah. It is, and that's why Wiz Khalifa is a weird choice, is because he's sort of uh, coastal. Don't you think? Well, he's Pittsburgh, right? Yeah. Pittsburgh is really big wrestling right. uh, uh, epicenter. Philly's really big too, and New York and LA are like the biggest. They get the rowdiest crowds. Who are your favorite rappers of all time? Both of you. Mm. I know, I feel like... Um, I keep wanting to address them as a group, like the ATL Twins. Like, I want them both to equally answer each I question. I definitely think you guys are cool than the ATL Twins, but... Uh. They're pretty good. No, Sid and Thurman are cool, but... Um, I don't know. I I always see you guys out at music events, so I mm-hmm. feel like that's how we connect on that type of level where it's... Um, we have the same taste in uh, outings. Mm-hmm. So it's like, who... There's so many parties all the time. It's like, how do you choose which party to go to? Wow. Like, who's playing? Is it who's playing? Is it the crowd? Is it like uh, who's DJing? It's like if we have that motivation to go out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I guess, but like, what's who, motivation? Who's talking about it. Like we check Twitter for like, hey, what's going on tonight? I guess like what party is getting? Yeah, if we're not most tired. Play? It's like kind of about the night, <laughs> our mood. Like, it's hard. Do we want to leave the house? Do we not want to leave the house? How yeah. many nights on average do you guys go out? It depends. Like, there were nights in, where we were here where I probably went out, like, six days. And then this week, the past two weeks, I don't think I've, I haven't been out once. That's a lie. Maybe twice. <laughs> I think we went To a bar. Out. Thank but, you, like, Amelia, just for being here. To a bar with, like, you. one friend, not to, like, a party party. You know what I mean? Right. I don't think I've well, been it wasn't, like, parties. a 6 a.m. kind of night, but we definitely went out. Yeah. <laughs> bar life, different than, like, a drawing yeah. to a party because of who's performing life, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what about your own brand? Tell me about this. Why did you need to start this? Go, man. Why do we need to start Chop Jean? I no, mean, no, no, the, the internal brand. What's it called again? Neck Year 90. Oh, Neck Year 90. I yeah. mean, it was just hard depending on so many, like, I love so many brands, but just, like, depending on them for what your store is going to look like and, you know, shopping around and just, we're always on the internet seeing what people want to wear and wanting, like, more of this and more of that. So just, like, creating it ourselves is really easy to right. just find, like, oh, this is super cool right now. Why don't we just put it on a T-shirt, put on a hat? And people really like what, you know, we have to offer. So yeah. Our brand is the number one brand on the site. Oh, yeah, it's okay. taken it's over. really telling. Have, are, are, is this more your thing than your thing because she just passed the question off to you? You're, like, kind of the brain It's her baby. This. Yeah, I'm doing, like, a lot of the design work and conceptualizing ideas for it and stuff, so. How do you come but up yeah. with something like the, like, what's the internal conversation when you decide to make a ask your boyfriend how my ass tastes shirt? Oh, that might have been Aaron. That was, that was, <laughs> the more sexual ones are usually Probably, Aaron. So Aaron's sexual and Amelia's. I'm, like, You're more nerdier, cutesy, kawaii okay. kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. And Amelia's. No, Aaron's like 
weapon chain. Anal? <laughs> anal question mark? Okay, I was going to okay. ask about that too. The anal like question mark me. shirt is like, this is this is a very bold thing. Yeah. Then, yeah. And it's just funny. It looks so good. Like, that yeah. actually would be my favorite thing. Like, yeah. white hat, pink text. Like, yeah. And it's hilarious. And they're on pillowcases. Exactly. And it just looks so good laying in bed. It's so in your like face. Anal. We have like, yes, daddy. Damn, I broke your heart. That's unfortunate. Good night. And anal on the bed. And it's just like the best looking thing. And this, yeah. and this so sells like crazy. Yeah, yeah, it sells. It's great. great. Brand. It's so hard to imagine the social situations that unfold. Like when some girl doesn't think she's bringing some guy home, she brings a guy home, she's got the anal pillow. <laughs> yeah, especially, it, especially like if it's it, ironic for her. This, this, or if you met on like Tinder. And or she's like, super down and this is do exactly this. what she wants and she gets what she wants. Shout out to Shop Jean for True. getting the anal and then she's popping. And laughing the next morning. Shout yeah. out to this guy. It's just unlikely that this guy is going to understand the joke in the same way that the average Shop Jean customer probably. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I could just imagine so much awkward. And I just wish that we were there to watch it unfold. True. Do you guys like, have like boyfriends frequently, or is this? Uh, are yeah, you too busy? Do you for guys that? have boyfriends? I don't. I just. I was engaged for two years, Swear. and I'm recently out. Until when? Uh, like four months ago. Wow. So and, now, and now you're just tweeting now images just of tweeting your, my your flirting. Ass I'm like yeah. so thirsty looking and stuff like that. But it's just fun. No, she puts like up a lot of examples line. of her flirting with guys and like oh, weird yeah. little exchanges. Uh, yeah, that are, like, really I want to do a book called Actual Text where it's just like the actual text that these fucking guys send that's <laughs> out of control. Like I, just out of like control. Give me a recent example. I mean, the haha and then what? Someone actually said that to me today. It's like white boys sexting. (laughs) Haha and then what? Winky face. It's like, oh, want to go to the movies? Haha and then what? You know what I mean? It's just like really out of control. Yeah. But I love the I love the texting boys. I don't know. I just um, I'm hoping that there's gonna be like this like renaissance where like men snap like back into it where it's like wait a second we're not fuck boys anymore like what? Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a whole generation of guys that have been ruined by Tinder? For, I'm gonna say I have never had a Tinder, and I never have had a boyfriend Once, that yeah. Long time. I have Tinder. or you had Tinder. Yeah, never I've it. never experimented with it, and my partner had never experimented with it, so I never had any run-ins with Tinder. So I'm not too familiar with it, but I do know that it gets weird, like real quick. Yeah, I'm scared to start using it. I'm not sure about it. She'll show me like messages. And we she just gets. keep swiping left. It's yeah. like, who are these guys? It's like I need like a curated pool. How of could men you to ever be attracted from. to a guy without knowing something about his personality? Or exactly. Right? Like, and like, I have a friend of a friend rule. Like, someone needs to introduce me. Right. I need to know you somehow. I keep getting lumped into this like boys who have brands that we carry like uh. thing. <laughs> this is like now like I'm on like the third person, not dating any of them. Just like I don't meet anybody like anywhere else. Like right. really, so it's like people I work with, which just fucking sucks. Cause like, <laughs> gotta work with you, or That'd by scene. Snapchat. Like you're every. You're... <laughs> She's had a Snapchat date. I've had two Snapchat dates. One was like super successful. I'm like talking to this guy, and he's like very Ooh. nice, but it was. It's, I don't know. That's how he met what you. Though? He like really sent you the proposal, like what, selfie style on Snapchat. Oh, well, one guy sent me a selfie, and then put the rose emoji in his hand, and was like, "Will you go on a date with me?" That's fucking. And awesome. I was like, that's "Okay, that's cute." Yeah. And the other one sent me a shrine of like a bunch of rare supreme shit, and I was like, okay, why not? He sent you. He sent you the he product. Sh- he like has a shit ton of like very rare novelty, like the fire extinguisher and match matches and stuff like that. And he gave it to you, or he no? Just he sent, sent me a picture. photo, like, and I was just, and the then shirt. I w- and I responded. I was like, oh, like yeah, what's I mean, that? He watches her snaps. He knows the key to her yeah, heart. You yeah, know? it's just funny. It's just on, like. It's funny when people um, try to, like, go on dates with us because they know so much about us already. Right. Like, I've literally been on a date where I'll, like, talk about myself, and they're like, yeah, I know. Oh. And see, that's and not like, the way, oh. right? It's better to act like you don't know. Yeah, it's, it's so right? much better to act like you don't know, mm-hmm. even if you know a lot of, like, if you know what I did today, just let me talk about what I did today. So or if you not find creepy. that boy that, like, really <laughs> doesn't know, like, do you keep him? I mean, I don't think that matters. It's fine. Maybe, maybe it's better because they know what they're getting into. That like we're kind of insane. What but. if a guy really just didn't know anything at all? Could you imagine yourself dating like a you know an Abercrombie guy, like a, a business? No, not Aber- guy. Don't say Abercrombie. Uh, Abercrombie's an old reference, but a normal dude right now, like you yeah, know? yeah. What's yeah, totally? totally. But like What's normal normal they don't come to me. It would never happen, huh? They're not going to get the joke because you're wearing say? a certified, certified sicko, sicko shirt. Exactly. That's why the normal dudes don't come. To certified you. sicko. You know the normal dudes love the certified sicko low key. That's about having kids. I mean, I definitely want kids and I want to have a cute little family. But just, like, the longer I do, like, shop jean and stuff, I'm not sure where that's going to fit in. But you don't make You could, like, bring your baby to the office and, like, have that, like, 
baby on the hip moment yeah. where you're we like... We already, like, can't handle our lives. Yeah. <laughs> I just do like, not know how the baby would factor like, Something in. would have to really change before yeah. you made this kind of life switch, yeah. huh? So, yeah, not sure on when that would happen, but... Do you guys have a hard time balancing being edgy and popular with being good role models? For yeah. sure. Yeah. I feel bad drinking this beer right now, but, like, I'm 23. A like, single I beer. I have a beer. And I just feel bad because, like, our target demo is, like, 16 to 28, but we, like, definitely have younger kids. Like, I see the kids who, like, tag on Instagram, and, like, there can be some, like, five-year-olds who get a pizza pillow from their mom. Wow. And it's just, like, scary when now I'm, like, the smoke and the cigarettes on Snapchat, and I'm, like, fuck, like, this is bad, but, like... You know, yeah, it's, kid- we just try to ch- try to stay as authentic and real as possible. See, that's like, the problem is when is being authentic is incredibly, like, right. I get shit for this hard. all the time. And right. I, like, who I am is not kosher for <laughs> young kids, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, you guys make a lot of stuff with weed on it, too. Do, are you guys actual potheads, or is this just a gimmick and marketing nah, gimmick? posers again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, recreationally, like, and it's, like, not used as, like, an escape method. It's just, like, I'm such, I have such, like, a hyper personality. I just need to, like, chill sometimes, which is valid. So, yeah, like, not, like, in any means, like, crazy about it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I used to hate it. I used to hate it and, like, be against it. We make fun of it, though. We have, like, a stoner starter pack on the site that has nothing to actually smoke with. It's, like, plant life socks. And And we'll post on Instagram, and we'll be, like, smokes weed once. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, we just, like, take everything super lightly so that, like, no one can really offend us that way. Because it's just, like, you think this is awesome? You think this is stupid? Like, we don't really care. Yeah, society's definitely changing. I think it's because people are being authentic and staying true to themselves. And, like, I love for people to, like, question, like, what we're doing. Like, I love talking about, like, the fact that I, like, left school. Like, that's such a controversial thing that's, like, looked down upon. And, like, I'm not trying to set a bad example for the kids. Like, school is for you if you want school to be for you. But if you don't, it's not for you. And you can choose a better path. And you can get inspired and get motivated and do your shit another way. Is it weird when kids ask you that? When uh, they ask you if they should stay in school? Do you feel weird giving them... No, because I feel like no one one will say this it's like hard and I wish I would have heard it and it's like there's definitely like a reason to go to school for so many people and I think that it's more about like following your heart and like doing what you want with like fucking four years of your life you know like I was never inspired in the classroom like I started my first little entrepreneur business when I was 11 selling autographs I just hated being in school every day at three o'clock I would go down like TRL like David Letterman get some autographs and I, that was like the highlight of my day yeah. and it kept me out of trouble you know I wasn't doing drugs and like it's crazy to think you were one of those girls going to get autographs at oh, TRL yeah, but it was you a business see the top of their head yeah, yeah but That's it was a business even at the young age it was like all about the money you know yeah. and I like saw the business opportunity and everything and it wasn't like super like groupy thoughty status which was good do you but, remember when you like first realized that about yourself that you had this hustling mentality I mean, I was, like, doing lemonade stands and stuff, like, every <laughs> summer as a kid. Like, every fucking day. Like, my mom would go crazy. It was just, like, a one time but So your thing. parents didn't, like, they didn't kind of instill this in you? Or was it where they they thought it well, was odd? My dad, like, left when I was, like, three. And my mom was, like, a housewife. And then when he left, she, like, had to, like, pick her shit back up and, like, start from scratch. She didn't go to college. So here's this, like, 35-year-old woman, like, competing with, like, out of college graduates to like get a job and she like immersed herself in the medical field like learned everything she needs to know and like became like an awesome medical secretary and like climbed up the ladder for the last like 15 years so she was like a big inspiration yeah like the respect of that like I have is like forever and like I just always wanted more for her wanted more for myself like I needed Jordan's I'm like, how am I going to get Jordan's? Like, yeah. I'm going to take this autograph and give it to someone who wants it because I don't fucking care about someone's, like, scribble. You ever fake autographs? No, never. It wasn't necessary. You probably could have. She's like, could've. whoa, don't talk about business like that. <laughs> <laughs> She's still in the autograph business. Oh, wait a second. Love. It's still keeping the business afloat. Uh, do, you, do you ever find yourself just straight up disrespected for being a woman in, this, in business? Not straight up disrespected. There's, like, so much stuff that's just like, oh, like, you're such a piece of misogynistic shit. But, yeah. like... Yeah, it's not like, there's not, like, any one instance I can, like, pinpoint. It just, like, is a common theme. And, like, you know, I have, like, three strikes against me. Like, I'm young, I'm colored, and I'm a woman. Uh And it's, like, I honestly feel like the age, like, fucks me more than the being of color or being a woman. Because it's, like, I built something awesome, like, with no knowledge, just, like, figuring it out. But, like, there's still just, like, you know, but by hiring people who are more experienced, it's, like, well, you're still, like, you don't know what you're talking about because I have more experience, and it's like, well, you didn't do this. Do you relate to the term feminist? No. Mm -hmm. I don't really relate to any term that, like, groups a certain group of people. Like, 
I don't know what a hipster is. I don't know what a goth is. I don't know what a this is. Those I don't are, like those labels. are all kind of out of fashion at this point. Don't yeah, because everybody has a lot of duplicity about them. Yeah, like with religion, it's like what is a Catholic? Like what is an atheist? You know, like I don't really like labels. It's just like you are what you are, and you feel what you feel, and you don't need to like group that and follow that and like live by this like mantra. Just like live by like whatever, do whatever the fuck you want to do. But I was going to ask you, do you when you look? In potential part, like what, what? What do you look for in potential partners? Do you look for someone who's doing the same amount of work as you? Does that make? Does that matter to you? Because I don't know. I haven't had a boyfriend in like over three years, um, and like I, I like had my head down, just like focused on the business for most of that until like this year. I don't know what's happened. I just like started living, I guess, and like kind of just like taking everything that comes my way. Thank you. <laughs> taking what comes my way. Like I don't really have like a set criteria. I'm just like kind of assessing what's going on and like learning so much about myself and what I'm interested in. How about you? Oh. With what? With workload-wise? With no. what you want in a guy? What I want in a guy? I don't Does know. he have to match your hustle is what I'm saying. Does he... I mean, I think what if he's he like a starving. To, I think he needs to. I mean, you could be a starving artist, but you're like dedicated to something and mm-hmm. you know putting everything yeah. you have into something that you love. I think that's important. If you're not doing like the exact same thing we're doing and necessarily like successful off of it yet i don't think that's a problem as long as he's doing what he can like we're just such passionate people and like that's like the number one thing it's like if you're not a passionate lover if you're not a passionate like hustler if you're not a passionate 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 Mm -hmm. it's probably not gonna work aaron's very passionate so about everything i feel you less passionate more reserved i'm different i mean i'm definitely more reserved but she like shows her emotion with everything she does like a lot a lot more Sometimes I'm just trying to keep a cool head so she doesn't. <laughs> I've, had a, a I've had to hold her back a lot of times. When you're deciding who you're going to date, it's basically a decision of if you're going to date somebody who's exactly like you or somebody who kind of fills the holes in terms of what you aren't. Yeah. And oh, that's that, nice. That's always... That's a good the, guy. The, that wasn't supposed to be romantic or anything. That was just kind of a realistic analysis. <laughs> no, that was nice. In terms Adam. of just like, you know, because I always think that myself is like, am I going to end up with a chick who's like just as crazy as me, which is usually who I end up dating because that just seems interesting or whatever, or am I going to have to at some point... The, the girl I'm talking to now is like the most normal girl ever. It's, it would be such a smart business decision for me to like actually wipe this girl up. But there's something in my head that I just don't know. You know, it's just. You said it would be a smart business decision. Not business, but like in terms of my own like mental health and stuff like that. Like I could see how it would be very healthy for me. Yeah. Okay. Exactly like me hasn't worked for me. Yeah. Because like I just like want to be your friend and like want your support and like want to be cool. So it's like when emotions get in the way, it's like. Actually, if I had to be honest, I would say I tend to date girls who are, like, infinitely crazier than me, like, <laughs> way. Because I have, like, reserve to crazies. a certain extent. But, you know, it's just... Uh, they, they express honest, it in a different way, you know? Adam likes, Seems like, the fun. thought goths. Do I? Oh, there yes, he does. He likes the... the See, I don't even know he likes who the you ham. think you know about me. So I don't, I don't know who you know about. They're always talking about like the ham girls, like the who's, ravers. Who's who do I talk about this? Well, Xavier, I'm no blast, no blast gang, right. no blast gang. Yeah, called out. I'm looking at the the reader questions on your Instagram right now. Cool. Just for the record, it's at Aaron. What are they G. talking about? Uh, I'm gonna try to find something exciting. Something right good. Here. Did Did you remember anyone say anything interesting that you're like, wow, that is intriguing. Wow, I should talk about that. Uh, I, like, kind of didn't want to, like, interfere and, like, know what the questions were. So I didn't want to, like, prep myself and, like, oh. have answers, so. If you were offered a lifetime supply of pizza or a lifetime supply of Versace, which would you pick? Pizza. It's a very what? strange question. And this question I is actually from now. Dion Tello Versace, who's... <laughs> Sorry, oh she definitely That's wants to troll. Say Versace, That's a troll question. Not to me, confuse it done as hell. Why do you like boobs? I almost feel like this question is supposed to be for me. They're cute. I don't know. Yeah. Boobs? They're fun. I'm actually I'm screening some of these questions because they're so, so dirty. Why are you guys so hot? How did you meet? Wedding date. <laughs> these are all questions that don't really deserve answers. Yeah. Do you consider yourself famous? No, not at all. Don't no. Oh, be. but I've been seeing a lot of... Um, Cool media outlets addressing your mogul status. That's mini awesome. mogul, yeah, she got mini mogul. Yeah, I, I was like, one. whoa, MTV. that's a strong what word. What was the headline? Can we look this up because MTV gave the headline, you a very MTV popular. called her queen of the internet. Queen, okay. whoa. queen yes. So how do you whoa. deal with this? Is the overall question is how do you deal with it when page view thirsty media outlets all of a sudden start saying crazy things about you? Like it's, I mean, it's, it's awesome. Fun, right? I'm yeah. just like so humble and like not hate myself but I just like don't even want to read it because I'm just like really normal and like it's hard to be like I'm just I'm like literally just like working all day like don't even think of myself as like 
that and it's like really cool people like connect and stuff to me but like I, yeah and I, I see why it would be interesting to people like they're inspired by like the hustle and stuff and I'm like so happy to provide that but like just people interested in like my daily like life and like I get like a million like adopt me's every day <laughs> like marry me's every day and it's like so funny because it's like do people think you're like Oprah like harvesting yeah. tomatoes in the garden like <laughs> the fuck like probably. what is this probably one day hopefully <laughs> I'll be like Oprah harvesting tomatoes Aaron, what's your favorite thing about Amelia her um, favorite feature fave feature actually fave feature the booty Oh. I, it doesn't have to be strictly that's, physical. That's my answer for you. Your feet? I don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> Maybe not physical. Let's get a little deep. Okay. As a person. As a person. Um, I love that you read my mind. I do read your like, mind. Like, we literally, like, finish each other's sentences constantly. Like, I'll think something, she'll say it, and, like, there's no hindsight bias behind that. Like, we literally, like, are, like, one in the same. And that's, like, so fucking rare. That is rare. I struggled through life, like, not having, like, a really good friend. And, like, it's just, like, amazing to, like, have. Got each other. Thank you. So yeah. when you said, what's your favorite thing about her? Um, she's, back to the passionate thing. She's so passionate in everything that she does. She, like, gives it her all. And, like, most hardworking person in the world. Thank you. A lot of people, like, because we, like, put on this internet thing that, like, our lives are so fun because it is really fun. But if anyone says anything like, oh, does Aaron even work? Or, like, how is Aaron working all day? I get so, <laughs> yeah. like, fucking mad at that. People always say, like, do you just working. smoke weed in the office all day? Like, why? Because we're fucking rolling, biz- rolling paper business cards because we know that people will eat that shit up and, like, we'll just be, like, a million yeah. times enhanced in everyone's eyes. Like, it's, I'm pulling the strings. I'm Vince McMahon. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the, and you the are Vince McMahon. <laughs> Thank you. Who is she if you're Vince McMahon? So who is she? Metaphorically, yeah. Uh, Triple H. Uh, <laughs> Am the star I? Yeah. Of the company? Oh my god! No, he's not star. He is now the COO. Oh, okay, okay. Not the COO, but like he's who like knew? the right hand, Triple H. and he married Stephanie McMahon, his daughter. He's a fucking smart guy. Do you not give a shit about UFC at all? Uh, like not passionately enough to like talk about but it. But it doesn't like, interest you when Brock Lesnar goes and starts fighting the UFC. You don't want to see like what his real fighting yeah, is like. Yeah, like I've watched Brock stuff, but now CM Punk's in UFC, which is interesting That's to me. That's very interesting, huh? He's going to get his ass kicked, but yeah, it's, I'm down. It's not likely to work out. I'm huh? ready to watch. He blocked me on Twitter so he could go fuck himself. He blocked you? I don't know why. I like literally only sing his praise. He was my favorite wrestler. He actually really got me into wrestling because when I first started watching, he'd always wear like a rancid shirt on right, yeah. television and he was like the only person in the company who wouldn't wear like the CM Punk shirt to sell, like you said. Right. They sell the merchandise, and I was like, "He's a rebel. He likes Rancid. I liked Rancid when I was like 14, like Daddy. And like Rancid's still my favorite band of all time. Right. And like, wow. I just Scott like, is, Scott is the cameraman likes that too. He's got a tattoo. He wants to show you later. Get out! <laughs> Let's go with the fist on the back of his oh leg. We tried God. to tell him not to get it, and he went ahead with it anyway. Terminal Five, September 17th and 18th, what? New York. You gotta oh, go. Shit. <laughs> shit back for for the, for the Rancid trip. show. Uh, somebody commented, Kanye or Kim. Uh, Kim. Me too. Yeah, Kim. Why? What? What, what about her? She's what? a genius. Yeah. Like, and so was Chris. But like, before she like was this figure, I remember lingering her because she was dating Benji Madden from Good Charlotte, and I used to love Good Charlotte when I was like ten Wait, to Kim fourteen. Was. Kim was. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's and an interesting relationship. Yeah, and he dated Paris too, I believe, which mm-hmm. is interesting. I think he was Kim a hot was boy first. at the time, huh? He was fucking hot. Or at Still the same is. time. Shout out Cameron Diaz. Oh. And I remember, like, researching her because I was like, wait, this girl's really cute. Looked so different than she looks now. And she, like, had an eBay store. And she would go into celebrities, her celebrity friends' closets and clean them out and sell the stuff on eBay. And that's, like, what I was doing at the time. I transitioned from, like, selling autographs to going to sample sales, like Tory Burch and shit, and then, like, flipping that shit on eBay. So I was like, this girl's vibing with me. Like, sh- so, like, she's had that hustle from really early on. And, like, people say she doesn't do shit. I get infuriated because she's so hardworking. I'm like, you don't know what it takes to, like, build that kind of that's a brand. That's an ignorant statement that she doesn't do anything. Yeah. Like, so that's she's doing real. something. Oh, yeah. Being she's doing a lot. a lot of work. A, a no. Lot of work. No, that's not no, it, too. No, she but you know what I mean? Work. Like, her yeah. job is actually to be, I mean, right. but, but to a certain extent, you could say the same thing about yourself. Like, you're not you to be famous but for your business to be ubiquitous and right. constantly in people's faces and stuff like that i mean that is what it is to be someone who makes their living off of who they are at this yeah point. yeah and everything that they do is a strategy this family you know and like yeah they have a team of people who like execute on it but like they're very careful and strategic and like i respect the fuck out of that i should ask you guys this question since i asked alex and serp and they gave me their like dude answer but uh how did you feel about the uh, bruce jenner controversy uh, well not the controversy oh, but how I it's how it's played out in the said. media 
it wasn't that it wasn't that offensive, but it was kind of like thirty five year old like hip hop fan answer that you'd so maybe, somewhat offensive white boy, you know, like I'm not gay, but you know if somebody is, is all that's gay. a great <laughs> Alex <impersonation. laughs> I know I just oh sounded like I'm so much for a second, that was right? great. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> you guys want another one of these? Or? Yeah, down. I'm good. I mean, um, that whole thing. Everyone deserves to be happy and be what they want to be. And regarding the whole media thing, there's no way he could do this without being, without doing what he do, what he's doing now. Like the two part like show and his own series. Like that's the only way he could go about this because of his entire life. Like since he was young, he's always been in the media. So I don't, I don't see how he could have done this more discreetly or yeah. less in our faces. Like we said earlier, like, atheist, goth, like, Christian, whatever you want to be, just, like, be whatever the fuck you want to be. Like, I'm just so Caitlin. down for that. People are just, yeah. If you want to be <laughs> Caitlin, Caitlin. 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 If you want to be Chris, be Chris. Like, I don't care. It doesn't impact me. Just be who you want to be and be happy. Caitlyn Jenner would be down with Shop Jean, no doubt. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Down for Caitlyn. If we were to go to that Krayshawn show that's going on right now, how many girls would come up to you and recognize you that you don't know? Maybe, like, three or four. On average? Yeah. It's not that crazy. It's not that crazy. It's solid, though. It's still just, like weird because i'm just like why and i'm like um, am i being nice enough i'm like really insecure about that like one morning we, our office is in times square and like i was having such a bad morning stupid boy problems and i was just like walking off so really furiously this girl comes up to me she's like oh my god are you Aaron from shop jean i was like no and i just kept walking and i fucking <laughs> felt so terrible because i used to go get the autographs and i know what it's like to be told no and it's like this person literally has like the best intentions also, she's not going to sell my autograph. She just, like, literally wants to talk to me for seconds. And I felt fucking terrible. I was, like, crying in the street. <laughs> and then I turn the corner and another girl comes up to me. And I'm like, whoa, this doesn't happen like that in, in New York at all. And, you know, not, a, like, not an event. And I was like, this is my fucking chance to redeem myself. So I was so nice. I talked to her for, like, five minutes. And I was like, okay, I'm never going to do that again. Lesson learned. She's I just felt terrible. Lesson right there. Yeah, that's what are because awesome. um, I'm a nice person. I just like had personal shit, but that's not this person's problem. So right. just like good lesson learned. People don't realize that you have real human to human shit going on too. Yeah, and I didn't realize that when I was 12 and slang and autographs. You know, I was just like, why can't Justin Timberlake stop for me? I'm cute. I'm small. I have braces. Like, just like take two seconds. You know. Yeah. You know they have a shirt that says I have no boobs or I have small <laughs> boobs I believe it was. Is there a shirt that says I don't wear bras? I just want to know like what uh, what the sales are like on that shirt because I want to know what percentage people relate to that. I mean great like our models get shit every day. Like really? people are just like she has no tits. Where the fuck are her boobs? And it's like what? Like she's That's a horrible. human. She's a gorgeous fucking girl. She's a model getting paid to fucking take this photo. So, yeah, I mean, shirt just definitely serves some people. Cause. Are you guys just not, do you try to just not dive in in terms of responding to people to, who say awful For the things? most part, no. Like, yeah. You have to just turn it off yeah, and just not Yeah, because I used to get really into it. I used to do the Instagram three to five times an hour uh -huh. early on. And, like, I, it's my baby. Like, I take everything hella personally. And I just had to, like, step back and, yeah, let someone else handle it. What do, um, you know, those girls that come up to you in the streets, what do they talk to you about? Like, what do they ask you? What are their? Do they ask for advice? Do they ask? Do they Not just want to really. know you? Like do they high. just want to be friends? Some of them like want a picture, and then they're just like, are like, you're the funniest. Person. Like infatuated with like, the lifestyle. You're so inspiring, which is really cool. And some of them just want to like say hi, which I'm like totally down to do. And like, I like. I, like, love meeting new people. Just acknowledge I wish you. we had a store so we could meet our customers every day. Like, I love when we do, like, sample sales what and face-to-face -face interaction. What I'm a talker, your, if you can't tell. What are your, like, brick-and-mortar plan? Do you have any brick-and-mortar? Like, what's that about? Yeah, we're trying to do it as soon as possible. It's, like, a big undertaking, and we're already juggling, yeah. like, so much shit. But um, we definitely see the vision, and, like, it'll be fucking popping. What do you think, California or New York? I think California is so much cheaper, so much easier. <laughs> it's, I can't believe I'm saying this. If you would have told me I'd be saying this six months ago, I'd been like, fuck that. Like, I'm a New Yorker. Wait, so where in but, New York are you from? Uh, I was born on the Upper East Side. Still okay. live in the apartment I was born in. Got that grandfathered rent. Mom's lived there for 40 years. How so. much is the rent? $1, Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I just, like, it's, like, sad. I, like, tried to make the apartment my own when my mom moved out last year. She got into, like, a studio that she's been on the list for forever, and the rent is dirt cheap. It's, like, fantastic in a nice neighborhood and a doorman building. Shout out to her for making it work. <laughs> but, like, it's still, like, I can't do anything to make it my own. Like, my elementary school is across the street. My high school is two blocks away. Mm. So it's hard. I got that $1,200 rent, though, so I'm trying to do the best I can. It looks I good. Yeah, it probably yeah. just 
It's not as cool as here. Mm. We have a right. real cute spot here. Yeah. Really where would here. you put your store in LA if you could? Like anywhere. If if money wasn't an issue. They don't know yeah. their way around that well yet. I don't we really like kind of Hollywood. Of... We really like Hollywood. I feel like we don't want to be like on Melrose or Fairfax or like where there's already like guaranteed foot traffic. Like, I'm not talking about Hollywood, like on Hollywood Boulevard. Like we want somewhere people are going to like <laughs> come to and like make a habit to like like be a part of yeah maybe you know. near a mall or in a mall i like love mall stores yeah. and i love the kids that shop at malls that's where i used to shop when i was what little. are your favorite things to do in the mall say you went to the mall right now your favorite hot topic we yeah. hit up hot topic the spencers the zoomies and Paxson and all that i just want to see what the mass america kids are buying because it's appealing to a lot of people and, and then we that's what we want to do we want to like, appeal to a lot of people we're the ultimate consumer the yeah. hot topic uh do they like rip you guys off no. Spencer's, nothing like that? No, there's, like, no, like, we can't say, like, we're ripping off. Like, you know, what is ripping yeah. off? Like, until we started our own line, and now, like, designs are directly being copied, like, fucking brushstroke for brushstroke. Like, that is ripping off. That happens a lot <laughs> to you guys now? I mean, yeah, now we started this shit two months ago. It started to happen, and it's just like, sure. okay, cool, we'll come up with something else. Like, you're not going to yeah. sell more of these, and now we will. Like, we'll, we're, we can do this better. You can carry literally the exact same shit as us. We'll still fucking do it better. We're confident enough in ourselves that we don't really need to, like, target other people and blame other people. Yeah, it's sad. But one shirt was actually made before we even made it. We posted the graphic and someone printed it on a shirt before us. I got so mad. That's the one time I got mad. Because I understand, like, you know, designs get recycled and whatever. I understand the business, but yeah. they beat us to it and I freaked the fuck out. Have you guys had to deal with cease and desist from some of the brands that you've parodied and stuff like that? Yeah. And the thing is, like, we don't, like, up until now, like, none of our stuff is parodied. And, like, it's... It's sad that it, like, falls on us when it's, like, we carry from the brands. And, like, we may or may not know if this is, like, a But they'll still come after you. They do come after us. And Uh, we, you know, brush it to the side as much as we can and just finesse it. But, yeah, that can be kind (laughs) of a headache. The finesse is real. Yeah. It's, like, we're at the point where we cannot fuck with shit anymore. Like, we used to love milking, like... Remember Almighty? Oh they had right. their like Drake and Kanye like face printed shirts. And once you get to a certain size, you yeah. just can't We're do that. Whatever happened with them? What? I don't know. You just can't do that for too long. It just you catches know? up to you real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was fun while it lasted. Yeah. I got one from Red Bull because we had a shirt that said caffeine and marijuana, and it was in the Red Bull font, oh. and they got us. <laughs> That's annoying. There was yeah. a picture of a bull too. <laughs> No, it's sad. I love the parody stuff. Yeah, it's just fun. <laughs> like, who doesn't want Drake fucking panties? You yeah. Know? <laughs> so would Drake send you, like, a cease and desist? Like, no, not Drake. People who own the license. You know what I mean? Drake loves that shit. Drake fucking wi- wifed a bitch from yeah, I remember sending, that. sliding into DMs with that whole fit on. He did. And he yeah. wiped Drake her? is wiped For a low-key little bit. I was yeah. like, wait a second. Yeah, some girl She was, like, in, in Toronto with him and stuff. Yeah, like, no, she was all over. It was, yeah. it was like, a little she minute. What's her name? Like, Shay G or something like that? I don't remember. Yeah, it was a little, it was I cute. I want to be more up to date on who Drake is having sex with. Let me be totally honest with you guys. Yeah, same. If Off you the learn, record, I'll let you know. Lurk, you can find out. <laughs> I feel like I should be kept up to date on this. Yeah. Taylor, you got any questions left? Because uh, we've, we've passed the hour mark, and I've run out of uh, my own questions and the reader questions. I don't know. I like boy talk. I like things like that. <laughs> I like diving, you know, like deeper than brands and things like that. But I feel like, is that... The direction you want to go. I don't know. I mean, you, oh, you want to talk more about boys? Well, f- I don't feel know. Ra- I just right like boy talk. I like boy talk. Yeah, shoot. What's up? What's going on with the boys? I don't know. Oh, well, you I told should you. see this guy that she was dating. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. We can't. No names. <laughs> no. no, I just, I would say that if you wanted to meet a girl who's clearly dating the kind of guys that might not make great long-term mates <laughs> i i date musicians taylor's recent choices. i date musicians and it's like a horrible horrible um cycle that i'm trying to break right now and uh, Damn. i don't know about that how i don't know how that, to break like... it's really hard it's really hard to break because um i see them as regular people and they yeah. don't see themselves as regular people. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm trying to get out of the no creative zone, like no musicians, no artists, no nothing. Because like I'm fortunate to like kind of understand the creative, but understand the business. But then when you're in like creative la la land 24 seven, and I'm just like, you could do this, and like you could be this, and they just like don't see it because they're just in their like dreamer, dreamer, yeah. g- dreamer zone. And I just like want them to be like the greatest possible. Like if that beats me up inside. You know what fucks me up is that I'll like meet a girl, start talking to her, and then when it gets to the point where I actually start telling her about like what I do and like what my ambitions are and stuff like that, is that a lot of times I feel like I really kind of like overwhelm them with just being like it almost makes them feel like they're not doing anything when I start talking about all the shit I'm doing and like stuff like that. And a lot of times, 
like it's very I don't know. Well, I guess you, like you guys can relate to it because you guys are busy as fuck. But I mean, yeah. a lot of girls just ain't doing shit to be honest. You know. Yeah, it sounds like they're intimidated by a strong man. I think lots of guys are intimidated by strong women. It goes like back and yeah, forth. And like, yeah. I don't think I've like been like. I don't know what the strong woman, strong man, like, mix is like. Right, like, um, but you'd love to think that this is possible. Right. This, this, the, that's what the Kanye and Kim thing is so, so empowering for yeah, us, right? right? We all like to think that this is possible. But you know what? I also, I'm not going to shit on their whole relationship, but that, like, there is some sort of facade going on between them two. For and, sure. you know, it's not 100% it's peaches pulling and strengths. cream, you know? It's pulling strength. To each his own, and um, when you date a musician, it's like a... You kind of have to like sign on the dotted line and say, you know, I'm ready to sign up for this, and uh, you're really not ready to sign up for it. Yeah, I mean, it's not even about like cheating and stuff on tour. It's like he's Kanye West. Like he'll throw out your whole fucking closet and make you cry, which he did. You know what I mean? Right. Like he's gonna do whatever the fuck he wants. Like, what yes. is it like dating him? Like how could this possibly? I guess that's I another reason that everybody to. is so confused by it. You couldn't pay me to date Kanye like, West. How could this ever work, right? You couldn't pay me to date Kanye West. I feel like I went to New York for a summer, um, not last year, but the year before. And these men were, like, strong. They were outspoken. They had a mouthpiece on them. And I was like, whoa, like, this is kind of hot. Yeah, how are guys like, different here versus this New York? This is kind of hot. I was like, these East Coast boys, I kind of feel that masculinity. And then these West Coast boys are all about the facade, all about this image. And it's like there's nothing behind the facade. Well, difference, though, on the East yeah, Coast I mean, versus the West Coast like dudes. Like L.A. boys have more feelings and are oh, more yeah. emotional yeah. and Drama. talk about their feelings more, which is fine to talk about your feelings. I talk about my feelings, but I guess I'm just not used to guys talking about their feelings so much. Yeah. That's uncomfortable. I remember one time, when I still lived in Brooklyn, me and a couple of my friends were making plans to go out, and we had two girls in the house who were from California, and they... I, I just saw one of them look at the other one because, like, the way that we were making plans was like, no, fuck you, we're going here, blah, 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 like, super aggressive. But I didn't regard my own conversation as being aggressive at all. And I just see one of the girls lean over to the other one, and she just goes, New York boys are so fucking scary. Oh she, had, she had never god. been to New York before. Oh, my God. And that, but now I have the perspective of being out here is that it's true, is that, like, the whole way of communication is just so much more intense, on the, especially in New York, really, like, especially in Brooklyn, especially yeah. probably the kind of guys I hang out with, but... I don't know. I mean, I think New York boys are a lot more passionate, like those Harlem boys, like those. I don't know. They're still dogs, but it's like, dude, dudes maybe, from New maybe York. Who I'm talking to maybe it's kids my, from New York. They grow up there, like the dudes especially. I feel like they just grow up in this little fucking petri dish, and a lot of times they absorb weird personality characteristics petri that, dish. that it's hard for them <laughs> to get rid of. Like, like I just know so many dudes from Brooklyn that are like too hood for their own good mm -hmm. they just can never operate in like a professional setting because they are just way too far gone and i'm not saying it's all a new york thing but i'm definitely saying that you get some fucking characteristics living there that might be hard for some people to use long term i don't know i think i might be ready to try an east coast boy do it try it i might try it well, like in casa or like uh we could get like Tony Yeo or something. <laughs> she likes the rappers, so. No, I'm breaking the cycle with the rappers. <laughs> I, just because I want an East Coast, but he, not all East Coast boys. You need rap. an EDM guy. No, 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 would no, you no, no. Would you rather date an uh, EDM DJ or a gangster rapper? Gangster rapper. No, yeah, rapper sounds gangster fun. Gangster rapper. Sounds yeah. fun, yeah. but is it Taylor? For a while, I've never done it. So Amelia and my mom have said they could see me with a basketball player, and I'm just like, absolutely. <laughs> no. That's a certain thing that girls start doing at nope. a certain point. They are like successful the craziest enough. people because, like, the pressure on the court. Right. I need to be the best. Like, this person's better than me. If I don't score this fucking basket, like, I'm gonna kill myself. Like, the support that you have to give them is like out of control, and like, you can't have a career. Do you, like, have, do you have aspirational wrestlers that you'd like to see at some point in your oh. life? No, I don't actually want to date any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, respect them as people. <laughs> but uh, Dean Ambrose is my favorite wrestler. You should have a... Re All right, boom, million-dollar idea. Podcast. You have a wrestling podcast. There you go. I, just, I, I haven't even watched, like, the last three weeks. I'm just so busy, so I like, can't keep up with it. Been watching basketball, though. I'm a fucking poser. How do you feel basketball. about the whole Lil B epidemic and the um, beef between him genius. and the Cavs? Fucking genius. Like, he could not do more and more to impress me every single goddamn day. I'm just like, you my are blowing my mind. So I'm from the Bay, and so I feel Brandon. I feel him. Was, was Lil B an inspiration in terms of starting Shop Dream? No, but I remember when Wonton Soup came out. Fresh, <laughs> no, 
early sophomore year of college, and I started the business sophomore year of college. <laughs> so like, I've, I've like definitely like looked to him as like you don't take yourself too seriously. Like you're like getting people to like you by just like being different. Like he's so different. And, and he's, he like, started his own world, and that's yep. kind of what you've done too. Although I would say you probably have done a better job monetizing it. Yeah, yeah. He could do more. I wish I could be his manager. Yeah. I'm not sure what he... I but he's think... still doing a great job. What's he waiting for in terms of, like, he, you know, Lil Bean is well, really Well, everything make a push. was timed really well with the curse and then the UCLA lecture. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he just dropped that new, was it Baby Soup or something? But do you think this video? is, like, him being a marketing genius or do you think this is him just babbling on Twitter and it just I've worked out? I've heard that it's, like, this is him. And he's just, like genius and he doesn't even really understand how much of a genius he is he's it seems like, like he, if he was genius. a real like marketing genius that he right. could be making a lot more money so right. you can kind of give it to him that he just might be a creative genius yeah i think he's one of those people that doesn't um categorize success with um monetary things and that's nice yeah, yeah. No, I think that was a little bit. He's like, yeah. you know, I uh, spell shit wrong. You, know. <laughs> you guys all follow a little bit. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I don't. He follows us back. I yeah. don't. For record. Oh, You're yeah. one of the one of the million. That he yeah, follows, exactly. Or? I'll retweet the Part good of the stuff. Team. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll still show each other tweets. We'll be like, I love that he tweets in the third person. I'm. Yeah. <laughs> so I try. I tried to follow little B, and I tried to. Um, I even turned. I muted him, and it's still. I just his. You muted his retweets, or you muted him? I mute tons of retweets. Oh, I, yeah, pro- yeah, I might yeah. have muted you guys' retweets because there's a lot of promotional stuff. Yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> is Definitely. that fair? No, that's fair. Okay. Totally. There's a lot I understand. Going on. I just want to make sure. I do retweet some good stuff, though. See, I always wonder that this is my main, my last thought on Lil B is I always wonder what he's actually like with girls because he's I, really such a fan of women, but I, I, I don't see him as being like a standard sexual being. I want to know if his foot fetish is real. Oh, no. no. That's no, all no, I no want to know. No information here. Two, two of the B, million me know. followers are here, and uh, we don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I just, that foot thing is really weird. I mean, it's not weird if it's really his fetish. I don't fetish. follow him enough to know about this. That's what all he posts is those yeah. DMs with, like, the I love little B on mm-hmm. my foot. Who is that girl? <laughs> you know? I'll do it. <laughs> you know? I'll do it. Let's do it after this. Maybe, yeah. maybe we should just do, like, a little B, like, dedication, like... <laughs> repost us I like we just want to know about this yeah yeah he should definitely watch this entire podcast i hope so what should we address before we uh, wrap this up we're already a minute 20 uh, an hour 20 in sorry <sighs> life's hard works hard but works i'm hard. glad there's but a lot of good. estrogen in this room yeah. it's, it's nice know. you feeling yeah. okay over there no i feel great yeah <laughs> i'm glad that i got be able to show with this podcast that it's not all a dude's club because me serpent and alex the other day was definitely a dude's club yeah so, so yeah. bro bro dab talk life. we were like bro talk Young there's thug. nothing more manly than dabs huh yeah <laughs> that's so just a real manly. guy and thing. it's so la nobody dabs in new york nobody so knows what that is <laughs> Oh. That's rough. No, but I mean, wax could get you in so much trouble in New York, too. It's like a whole different level of crime Just smoking out there. on the corner, you could get in trouble. It's like... But everybody yeah. still does it in New York, you know? No, yeah. no. I, I, everyone that I know in New York is like, no, do not smoke on the street. You know, I smoked on the, the street for the like first me. time recently. We went to get a Brazilian wax together. <laughs> mm-hmm. And here, like, I, she's done it before. I've never done it. I was like, I need to be super fucking high for this, or I will not be able to, like, <sighs> handle it. And I still couldn't handle it, but she went first. Literally, legs over the head. It was, like, quite the experience experience and she has like screamed out to me just like (laughs) it was like so, so you, much you, fun. you went it. to get a Brazilian high. Yeah, I had to like medicate because did like, you that like shit was what kind of high? So like Xanax painful. or weed? Oh no, weed. But is we this were smoking incredibly the street. painful? It's, it's incredibly so painful because so they like painful. really get in there. Like they don't. She doesn't care. I'll go get one if, if Amelia will Snapchat it. Do um, it. So, you know she what? She Wait. does dudes all the time. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm. And we're wow. like, do the guys like get aroused? Is that awkward? It's like this like old Asian woman. And she's like, yeah, like I didn't do happens. guys for like six years. But like now it's just kind of like whatever. I'm used to it. I feel like you kind of like maybe guys just like get aroused. I don't even know. It's just like people like touching well, in that down area. There, like, what? Like, I don't know. Yeah. You guys don't understand what it's like for a guy that you might be just scared. You know, like just. You know, uh, I don't know. I can't think of any example that would be appropriate. Yeah, we were talking about anal earlier, but it's not that late. That's your last question. (laughs) Anal question mark? Uh, No, I was going to say anal (laughs) anal stimulation. Uh, All right, so how can people get in touch with you guys and stay in touch with you? At Erin Jean, J-E-E-N. I'm social media. I'm Amulia with three O's, A-M-O-O-O-L-I-A. Please hit us up. We love you. Shopjean.com. Nojumper.com, theoretically. <laughs> Nojumper.com on uh, Twitter. Thank you very much to my uh, lovely guests, Aaron, Amelia, and my co-host, Taylor, who came through. Uh, thanks to Scott for filming. Thank you. Please subscribe to us on SoundCloud or whatever if you uh, enjoyed this.
That's it.